Hello, and welcome to today's episode. The past few months have been quite eventful, and I've been going through a lot of lessons, and some of them include the people who listen to the podcast, the amazing support that I've been getting is something that I deeply appreciate. I'm gonna try harder to produce more content more frequently. I have been consistent with my writings, however, I haven't been so with my podcast, with YouTube, but I aim to do that and I'll try my best. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and if you do, Give it a like, subscribe, give it five stars on Apple Podcasts, and yeah. There are a lot of things that I want to talk about. Most of them have to do with the journey and the experiences I've been through the past three months. And I don't want to get into the details themselves. Rather, I want to get into the lessons and the the thoughtfulness that came with all of these things that I've been going through. One of them is the way I've been immersed with other people, the way their lives are different from mine and yours and yours from theirs and mine, the whole the whole thing. So there's something quite interesting, the way you talk to people and you seek to connect with them and you discover this psychological and social layering that they put uh, they put on and it's not a bad thing it's a good thing it's a necessary thing even and i find it interesting because for some reason that layering which again is necessary has made genuine connection really difficult and while that may sound like a problem it's also a good thing because you never know well sometimes you do but most of the time you don't know what intentions the person you're talking to has a lot of the time their intentions are selfish they care about self-gain and they are self-focused which is not a bad thing being self-focused is a good thing but on those many times their self-interest will run you over like a train you know that meme of two trains or actually it wasn't a train it was a bus two buses hitting each other that's how they will treat you they will run you over for their own gains so it's so it's it's a necessary thing to be layering your personality and your attitude And how does that happen? How do they layer themselves? Well, what I've noticed is there's a mask of being genuine, being nice, being polite, but it's just a mask. That's not who they really are. Um, They're just being agents of what they are representing while they're talking to you. Now, how, how did the world come to be this way? I do not know. It's, it's, it's interesting to me. I've managed to make connections with some people, connections that allowed me to seep through the layering and see how they are. And then like, a, it was just like a rubber band. It just pushed me back outside. I, th- there was no way to get beyond this layer. There was no way to get them to take it off albeit in some cases they were able to you know take it off speak and then put it back on i'll give you examples so i've been talking to people in different fields um, that i had mutual connections with and i mentioned one of a few of them it was a group they asked me how are you doing and i i was very exhausted at the time very exhausted because of a lot of things that I've been going through and a lot of things that I'm still gonna go through and I said I'm I'm tired I'm I'm good but and I I mentioned my problems I was just you know what I've been going through this and I have to go through that and 
when I said that, they related to it because some of them, actually all of them, were going through similar things. Some of them went through it. Some of them are still going through it. And that allowed them to connect. They were like, yes, oh my God, me too. I'm dealing with this world. I'm having to be this person. I'm not exactly myself. I have to put on this layer. They obviously they didn't say it in that context, but they, they allowed their humanity to come out and to talk about their struggles. So in talking to them, they allowed themselves to come out and say their problems, say what they're dealing with, say that, you know, I'm this person and I'm going through this and that so that I can keep going with this wheel, with this job and with the demand that my life has. We connected for a brief moment and then wished each other good luck and moved on with, with the day. Another time when I felt a real connection from a person and when I say these people are putting on these layers, I'm not saying they're being insincere. I'm just saying they're doing what's necessary to keep others at bay to protect themselves you know kind of like the immune system protects the body another example is i was talking to someone who i've been working with for two to three weeks and we were communicating a lot there was a lot of understanding there was a lot of um how do i say this there was a lot of back and forth and we got to talk about a few things that were a bit personal and at that moment this person said, well, I don't really know you, you're a stranger to me, because we were talking in a professional setting. And when they said that, I was like, like, I didn't say it verbally, I didn't mention it. I was like, that's true. That's an honest and genuine comment. We really are strangers. We may have been working together closely and professionally for the past three weeks, but you're right, we're strangers. There was no pleasantries. There was no faking togetherness or whatever. You know how some businesses say, we're family. No, you know it. They're not family to you. And, and to have someone not put on that mask or that layer, it's not, it's not a mask, it's just a layering. To just say it, clearly directly you know what we're put in this situation and you know i don't really know you and by i i don't really know you there's there's like a bold really they're saying i don't really know who you are uh, i don't know your, your history i don't know you on a personal level or on an intimate level i just know you on on the grounds that we have in common so the whole thing that I'm talking about is there's a longing for genuine and sincere human connection. I think it's necessary. I think your soul needs it. But I also think it's rare to come by. It can be complicated to reach and yeah so here's something that i think helps you in doing whatever it is that you want to do without feeling peer pressure from your surrounding and it's the fact that there are so many people in this world and most likely nobody cares what you do <laughs> that's the subject of the last video i recorded anyway so that does help. I've been taking public transportation a lot the past month and it's crazy to look at strangers that you know you will never meet again in your life. Well, let's let's put aside that there is a chance you might meet one of them. You never know. But that fact remains. You see them. They look different. They come in all shapes and clothes and accessories and some of them really stand out while some of them don't and each one of them has a whole world in them a whole life they've gone to school they've struggled with their families they've 
probably been in relationships and had jobs. They have had dreams and passions and ambitions. And to you, they're just strangers on the bus or on the train that you will never meet again. <sighs> What's crazy about it is the fact that you don't feel that it's crazy. You don't even think about it. Well, I'm, I'm not accusing you. I'm just saying that it's something that you as a human being got so used to that it doesn't matter anymore. You don't think about it. You just get on the train, get off at your station and, you know, go do your thing. It, it isn't anything else. So, and perhaps what's also intriguing is, so if I wear something or do something, I I think people will judge me or people will think about it or look at me strangely. Yet at the same time, I see people doing all sorts of crazy things, all sorts of creative things. And they like, they dress up in the wildest ways and no, nobody even looks at them. Nobody bats an eye at them. It's like, yeah, you do you, nobody's looking, nobody, like maybe they notice you for half a second and then they move on with their lives. So what's stopping you? What's stopping me? Do what you want to do. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you want to do it. You want to be you. You want to express yourself. Uh, I mean, sure, I, I came from a conservative society. I still live in a conser conservative society. Maybe you are living among a conservative society. And the tiniest thing that's out of the usual really stands out it's 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 going to be judged it's going to be ridiculed it's going to be um argued against and you're going to have to confront a few people but really it doesn't matter it's going to get normalized it's going to be accepted just like everything else in life that with time people adapt to let me let me press on on this subject usually it isn't just one thing that stops you from doing what you want to do there are a lot of things one of them is comparison you could com you could be comparing yourself to someone else who's different from you who's doing things differently and you start thinking hey i i feel stupid i'm i'm not like that person that person who looks confident and looks cool and yet I'm here doing these things or I want to do these things and then you know comparison really poisons your mind so that's another thing that can pollute you makes you una unable and unwilling to do anything uh, it's comparison another thing that plays a tremendous role on your cognitive ability, your thoughts, your feelings, is the environment. Now, the environment obviously includes your immediate vicinity. It also includes the people around you, what requires your immediate demand, and sometimes peer pressure plays a role into what the environment is. Sometimes you cannot be yourself just because of who is around you just because you feel pressured, perhaps judged, perhaps you feel violated by the gazes of those people around you. You're trying to do something or you're trying to be yourself, but you cannot. You have to bring up your defenses and act according to what the environment demands, what those people around you are pressuring you into trying to fit in, trying not to stand out. Even though your behaviors when you're being yourself aren't necessarily asking to stand out, they're mild, they're normal. You're just trying to be yourself. You're trying to dress up a certain way or do things that you enjoy that may not be convenient to those people who will gaze at you and start thinking what is this person doing perhaps if you force yourself in with noble confidence and admirable charisma then you're gonna be able to 
not be shaken by their judgment. Perhaps they're going to admire you for this behavior, but it's not so easy to do that. Perhaps it most definitely will require practice to be yourself in an environment that is opposing you being yourself. Now, that's all good and fine. The other way around also plays as big of a role. When you're in an enriching environment, an environment that enables you to be yourself that helps you that allows you to do things smoother easier you're not going to be grinding against the grain just to be yourself and to think more clearly you're not going to be having her to jump hurdles and to face challenges just to have a clearer cognitive capacity it's 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 as if there are no it's as if there is no fog or mist blocking your capability to be yourself and to think clearly so that's that's a thing that perhaps you aren't always privileged to have but practice allows you to be more connected with who you are to an extent that an, an environment that doesn't help will not affect you just as much as it used to be because through practice you got better because with practice you got better you're less bothered um, while on the other hand if you have an environment that allows you to feel accepted to not be judged or um, to not be in a way violated because there are societies where if you do anything outside of the norm which is really hard to define in this day and age but if you step out of the norm people will the bare minimum is they're gonna look at you and judge you with their gaze you know it's it's a very fierce and and disapproving gaze while there are other societies that really people will not look at you even if you do whatever it is that you do which is an interesting contrast but if you are in the former a society that is really hard to do your own thing without being judged i think the best method to deal with that is to allow yourself to be exposed on acceptable increments so that you can build up confidence to a point where it doesn't bother you as long as they're not trooding or harming you or or getting in your way or you in their way other than that me being here in this place initially i did feel uncomfortable because people would be staring at a person who's using a camera and talking to it or using a microphone in public the same way I'm doing right now but with exposure and with time and practice I got so much better I mean compared to a few months ago I tried to do the same thing I'm doing now and the peer pressure was a bit distracting I wouldn't say it's too much it was too distracting for me to speak loudly to be able to stay focused to stay on point Yet now, I'm more capable of doing that for two reasons, which I've already mentioned. The first one is the environment helps. The second reason is being put there, exposing myself, practicing this until you get used to be able to be yourself, even in challenging environments. And yeah, thank you for listening. I'll try to do these more often. I love doing the podcast. I love recording for YouTube. So if you enjoy this, please support the channel and I'll talk to you next time. Take care.